the world we want to live in tomorrow begins with the way we do business today. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We are in a, um, it's a chaotic, noisy world. And so there's lots to, to distract consumers. And so creativity becomes the tool that we can use to kind of cut through and engage. But how do you ensure kind of that you keep the level of creativity elevated in your organization? Yeah, so the first thing to do for brands of our um, love brands, our brands such as M&M's, Snickers, we have brilliant, generationally loved brands. We stick to the core of the brand. We know what it stands for. Our teams who have worked on it, the brand's purpose are clear. And then we elevate the creativity by uh, not restraining uh, the work around that, right? As long as you are true to the brand, culturally relevant and true to the community that the brand serves, then the creatives come up with brilliant ideas. That's a really fascinating observation around this idea of an organization that doesn't think in quarters, it thinks in generations, so therefore has to sort of purpose naturally becomes ingrained. But how do you stop purpose from being kind of virtue signaling, where it just becomes a, a thing that you do to look good rather than really mean it? Yeah, so uh, let me step back and uh, make an observation about Mars. I'm, I am yeah. actually uh, quite uh, new to the company. I joined in October. Uh, Mars has been founded with um, generational thinking, uh, a very ahead of its time purpose. So Horst Mars wrote a letter in 1947 uh, where he said, uh, he introduced the concept of mutuality and he said, the world we want to live in tomorrow begins with the way we do business today. So that is really, and the five principles of the company is really embedded in the thinking. Uh, and that brings a generational uh, approach to how we do business. And what are the issues of our generation that we need to have a positive impact on? It's our planet is under stress, of course. Our society are, is under stress. Uh, people are suffering from loneliness. The natural evolution of the company's founding uh, principle is to the brands too. Take M&M's for instance. M&M's is 80 years strong and it has always been about sharing and the power of fun to share. When the team looked at the, in the last decade how it was coming across, it needed some updating. So what is today's uh, expression of sharing, it's a sense of belonging. So we redefine or remodernize our purpose as uh, creating a world where everyone feels like they belong. And because our tone is fun, uh, it's for the fun kind. So we call our community, or in fact, in the case of M&Ms, our fandom, the fun kind. So we're building a world that is inclusive for all fun kind. You did ask, um, we think about it in a couple of uh, manners. So is it clear what the brand uh, stands for? Is it connected to what its community is interested in? Is it relevant to the culture? And is, it, is there commitment, long-term commitment? You will find that we put our money where our mouth is. We work with NGOs. We make real world impact while also staying true to, to the purpose over multiple years, usually a decade. I, again, it comes back to that, like, thinking in generations. Yes. Yeah, that, that it commitment. is so, so core in, in the fabric of the company. Completely. No, I, I, I like it. The, um, but actually, th building on that point, because when you think ahead or, or when you are trying to kind of plot what comes next and, and continue to remain relevant with consumers, uh, implied in that is, is, is kind of, keeping on top of like consumer expectation. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's funny, I, I, I feel like sometimes we forget that we just lived through COVID-19 right. and we saw an acceleration of kind of changes in terms of consumer behavior. But how, how do you stay one step ahead and keep up with those, that change? Um, in terms of techniques, of course, uh, we have brilliant uh, human intelligence, t uh, intelligence um, associates, the teams, and also digital data and analytics teams who bring us the data points and we analyze. But you probably didn't ask about uh, the technicalities of it. It's more understanding the patterns and what is the pattern today? As I uh, mentioned, with the new way of living, people live fluid lives. They live online and offline. Their consumer journeys are nonlinear. They go across touch points. And within that, they're expecting meaningful, personalized, 
offers and relationships and to be able to experience the brands uh, in a seamless manner. So what we say is we want to give the right message at the right time. This mm -hmm. has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. However, we also add now the right offer at every relevant touch point for everyone. So underscoring the personalization aspect and underscoring the fact that marketing, sales, message, product are now interlinked. Just a fun fact, uh, one of our uh, core categories in China this year, 97% of the growth came from interest commerce. So people are used to now engaging with content and when it makes sense to them, when it's uh, meaningful to them, they just go to the buy button and just get the product that they wish for. So that um, personalization and I want it now are the two shifts in the mm. consumer's habits and our job is to make them uh, have integrated brand experiences through those multiple and nonlinear journeys. Okay, so that, that's in terms of to, to, to enable that sort of personalization at scale does require access to data. Right. And uh, uh, I'm guessing that it, it, you don't naturally have a lot of primary data to hand, just given the way in which the relationship with the consumer happens. So, how, how are you finding that data? So this is easier said than done. Uh, so we do have uh, a method. So we say that we put the consumer and customer at the uh, center. We connect our expert functions beyond marketing, marketing, sales, shopper, human insights, um, and power them with data and analytics. Uh, we do have very large communities. Uh, and to be able to get the uh, data, um, first party data, uh, or now we call some of them zero party data, mm -hmm we need to have a value exchange with our community. And when you are anchored in the purpose and actually doing real impact and having engagement with your community that is authentic, that is continuous, they do find the value and they do give us their data and they give us the license to, to work with that because they know that we will uh, respect the rights and always work within the, the purpose that they've shared it for. Your title, Chief Growth Officer. Yes. So I'm uh, obsessive about kind of words and meaning. All right. And so I, it's an interesting because there is a distinction between chief growth officer and chief marketing officer. Right. In some people's eyes. So how do you kind of describe your role and, and, and your remit within Mars Wrigley? So I take care of marketing, sales, um, innovation and e-commerce. Uh, so that is sort of the scope. But what I truly do is um, I get to take care of uh, and steward brilliant, iconic brands like M&Ms, like Snickers, like Dove Galaxy. So we uh, are the brand builders. My team is the brand builder. We take care of the portfolio decisions. Of course, the digitization uh, and the capability building of our associates to win in this new world. We are stewards of growth, but of course it takes a village, right? And yes. we have brilliant associates with the right mindset, the growth mindset, and an ever learning culture. So AI popped up earlier. All now, right. Now let's come back to it. <laughs> so thinking about the, the context of, of, of your, your remit, like what, what, what impact has, will AI have on it or, or maybe currently does? Yes, um, I mean, AI is not new. Of course, we do use it, but um, the conversation is happening more on the public AI and the generative AI. Yeah. Uh, my view, as is the case with every technology breakthrough, there's a little bit of the fear of the less known, right? And that brings about a debate that happens very sharply. My view is to, to look at it in a balanced way. So let's make sure that we take care of the responsibility uh, part of it. In Mars, we do uh, work with Microsoft and uh, Institute of Responsible AI to make sure that it uh, respects IPs, the decisions remain with humans, we don't exacerbate biases. So we do take that very seriously. And I also encourage uh, to see the potential in it. So AI has the ability to process billions of data points and provide insights that are deeper than any one human can do. With the help of those insights, we can amplify human ingenuity. I don't find AI as to replace, but it will amplify the brilliance. So the ideas get better and better, more connected to the community. And generative AI is going to give us the ability to execute the personalization at scale. So the potential is, for me, 
amplifying creativity and bringing it relevant to the individual and the communities with the shared um, wishes or passion points, uh, more so than the pure cold-hearted efficiency of it. So thinking about kind of personalization, there is, um, for, 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 for many consumers or people, there is an expectation that the brand will understand who they are, um, both in terms of gender, race. So when we think about kind of diversity and ensuring that like we include all people, like how are you tackling that? So it depends on the um, uh, brand's purpose. So mm -hmm. if we take M&M's, which is all about sense of belonging, as mm -hmm. I said, our um, joining factor or our uh, fabric is all about fun. So we define fun kind as everyone who want, everyone can uh, live in this world. Um, we're building a world that is um, that everyone feels like they can belong. So it is beyond um, gender, race, ethnicity. It is all inclusive. So we are inviting everyone. And our one ask is that we engage with conversations that matter for everyone, and we build bridges between those diverse. Uh, points of view or diverse passion points and use fun fun as the language of that I, I love that. it's it's uh it's we found it, it is the thing that pulls people together like humor fun it like we, we can all it resonates you know, in exactly. every culture every country we are a global business you know we don't talk about that a lot you saw in the um, Super Bowl ad which was the last uh, expression of um, last iteration of uh, M&M's campaign, which was supposed to be a U.S. Uh, campaign. Overnight, uh, actually at, at the minute, uh, it passed through boundaries to the English-speaking world and even to other languages as well. So when the community is engaged and you create inspiration and fun, uh, the engagement cuts across. So I, that, that's an interesting point because I, I, sometimes we see things that, that kind of spread around the world and, and kind of think it happens by accident. What you're articulating is, it feels like it was a lot more deliberate. Um, and I know one of the, the challenges in global marketing is, is finding an insight that is kind of resonates across the globe, but stops short of being a cliche. So how do you, how do you sort of mine for insights that, that work across the world? Yeah, that is, the holy grail of the answer, right? So uh, the question. So um, I'll give you an example from our chocolate brand, Dove Galaxy. Um, when we have a human-to-human -human impact, everyone across the world subscribes to it, is inspired to it. So Dove Galaxy, of course, uh, its purpose is to empower women all throughout its supply chain. It's invested uh, together with NGOs, uh, and we are aiming to impact one million people. Um, and the campaign idea that the team came up with is, your pleasure has promise. And they tested it in China, in the UK, in the Middle East, works everywhere. Because human to human impact, that insight of helping your fellow person, no matter where you are in the world, it just resonates. Yeah. And if it is true and connected to the brand, which in our case it is to Dove Galaxy, it's just very natural. And the consumers can see that. They engage with the world. Uh, and when they see a brand clear, connected, and committed to its purpose, they want it to be better. So just thinking about the next generation of marketer or chief growth officer, like what, what one piece of advice would you give to people that will occupy your seat in 10 years' time? Um, if it's one, I will say curiosity. Um, this is an ever-changing world. We must always be learning. I spent uh, at least two, three hours every week to read, connect, learn with a partner, or simply do a training. So please remain curious, remain open-minded, and have a positive attitude towards things. Uh, that would be my, my advice. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.